some studies, and our studies show that if we built up an area, about 40%, uh, and that means I'm still leaving 60% as green area. The net effect of just this amount of development is that the flood water that reaches the river increases 190 times. The result? During heavy rain, downtown Kuala Lumpur becomes Lake Kuala Lumpur. To bring the flooding under his control, Kesril is mounting a four-tiered defense strategy. At the first line of defense, the crew are installing the enormous diversion gates in the Gombak barrage. It's the rainy season, and the only thing between the river and the work site is a temporary bank of earth. When a heavy thunderstorm strikes, the river can swell to six times its normal volume. 300 tons of water per second. The water can come up uh, very fast, uh, in a matter of minutes, actually. There are a few cases where we are unable to bring out the machines in time. Working in the river during the rainy season is high risk. So when can this uh, skin wall be up? By next week. Okay. But manager Anwar okay. Mahmood has no choice. Okay. Dry weather is something of a bonus to every contractor. They prefer dry weather. But in this project, we are dealing with uh, nature. And in Malaysia, we have almost uh, more than 200 rainy days in a year. Fortunately for Anwar and his team, the weather is on their side. Today, if it holds, they will get the gate installed without facing the onslaught of the river. But the gate must withstand up to 65 tons of pressure for 100 years. Each gate weighs nine tons, or four military Humvees. If the crane drops it, water will be the least of the workers' problems. With the gate in place, the riskiest part of the job is over. When a flood is predicted, the gates will close, taking the full force of the river's attack and diverting all the water into the diversion canal. The Gombak Barrage is almost ready for its 100-year watch. But the battle has only just begun. The canals, part of the second line of defense, are a construction nightmare. The plan is to widen the Gombak from an existing canal and build the Kero from scratch, both through suburban KL. This urban obstacle course has forced the engineers to compromise on their approach. In normal circumstances, where there are no dwellings or structures nearby and the ground is good, we would definitely go for the open-cut method, which is faster, cheaper and cost-effective. In the open-cut method, a digger excavates a wide, gently sloping canal. But in this crowded neighbourhood, that's not an option. Instead, they must undertake a massive engineering project. Almost 4,000 bore piles that join together to form 11 kilometers of retaining wall. First, they install bore piles on either side of the route, then excavate the soil to make a narrow, deep canal. This technique overcomes the lack of space but still means heavy construction, dangerously close to homes. We have experienced house cracks, 
and to a certain extent uh, collapses of certain structural members of those, these houses. Today, they're beginning a brand new section of the Cairo route. Right beside a busy suburban street. For site manager Tan Tiong Chi, the risk of damage to nearby structures makes his job extremely stressful. The first pile is already underway. They've driven the 20 meter steel mold into the ground and excavated the hole. But on the other side of the canal route, they've hit an unforeseen obstacle. An old metal pipe. It has to go before the job can begin. Back at pile one, their installation is in full swing. The team is ready for the eight-ton steel core that forms the backbone of this reinforced concrete pile. It takes almost a day to complete each of these handmade piles. Keeping to schedule is crucial. But unfortunately, Team 2 have discovered that the metal pipe is attached to a huge concrete block. Removing the block proves a challenge. It takes the combined force of a digger and a crane to prise it loose. The team can finally begin pile two. Back at pile one, the steel mold is removed, ready for the next install. It's been a stressful day, but despite the problems, there's good news. No houses were damaged. Tiong Chi can go home a happy man. For today, anyway. There's still plenty of bore piles to be installed through the heart of suburban KL. But the problems in suburbia are nothing compared to what they face with the third line of defense. A problem millions of years in the making that could derail the tunnel. The Malaysian government is on a mission, an epic project to save the nation's capital from flash floods. The source, powerful thunderstorms that pound the valley for months on end. These storms have become more severe and unpredictable. Thunderstorm formation need two things. One is uh, moisture and the other one is heat. Malaysia is sandwiched between two huge moisture sources, the Pacific and Indian Oceans. In recent years, the moisture coming off these oceans has increased. Climatologists believe this could be due to global warming. Global warming adds excess energy into the climate system. Eventually, this will uh, cause uh, changing climate pattern at local, uh, regional, as well as global uh, scale. But it's not just global warming that's the problem. As cities turn green space into concrete and glass, the local temperature soars it's called the urban heat island effect. And KL is one of the hottest urban islands on the planet. 
Kuala Lumpur has been warming uh, at a rate um, much higher than the global uh, average for the last 40 years. The result, Kuala Lumpur, has become a massive thunderstorm factory. Thunderstorm comes, it overloads the system, we get flash floods. What we have noticed is this whole phenomena uh, has become more frequent and more intense. To solve the problem of today's floods and future-proof the city, the engineers must divert 10 million cubic meters of flood water through a densely populated city. In suburbia, they're building massive diversion canals. But canals are not an option in downtown KL. There's just not enough room. Gamuda International come up with a revolutionary stormwater tunnel to solve the problem called SMART. 9.7 kilometers.